which obviously the first question I think everybody has is the difficulty of playing on a Sunday and then coming back on playing a when, on a Wednesday. Uh, what kind of challenges does that present? And since you have played the teams before, does that make it a tad bit easier? Uh, yeah, I would agree with that, just in terms of familiarity with uh, the opponent. And uh, but we couldn't do a, a lot of uh, live work. And uh, yesterday we, you know, we watched film, but we didn't practice. Uh, guys logged heavy minutes, and uh, you know, guys were pretty sore yesterday. But we. Uh, Bounced back today, had a good practice this morning, and uh, again, avoided a lot of live opportunities. Usually we would we would do more live work the uh, day before the game, but uh, just can't risk anything right now because of how, you know, shorthanded we still are. So but we're excited, you know, there's guys uh, feel good about themselves with the win on Sunday, and uh, it's carried over into the practices and looking forward to hitting the road here real sh uh, shortly. Uh, hey, Coach, I just wanted to ask you about getting your 100th win as a head coach at ASU. And, um, again, just say congrats on that accomplishment. Um, I was just wondering, now that you've kind of had a day or so to, to uh, process that accomplishment, um, just what would you have to say about your time at ASU and what hitting that milestone means to you and what it says about you as a coach? Yeah, I just think, uh, you know, I, I look back and uh, I've had a great opportunity to work for some really good people here, very – very supportive of, uh, of our basketball program uh, over the years. And uh, just, I've had, you know, some great kids that, that I've been blessed to coach. And remember back to the first day of seeing, uh, you know, Trey Holder and Cody Justice and how, uh, how special that became as, as those guys were seniors and, uh, you know, leading us to our first NCAA tournament. And, uh, you know, you go right down the line, Shadden Evans, Lou Dort, Zylan Cheatham, some really great kids that I've been, you know, again, blessed to coach and uh, really good memories, you know, a lot of good memories, a lot of big wins. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, Bobby, I, I caught some of the Doug and Wolf interview where you said that it's hard to be disappointed with the season, just given all of the challenges that you guys have faced with injuries, illness, COVID, et cetera. And I was just hoping you could expand on, on that for fans and just kind of how you look at everything. I just look at it like I get it that, you know, people could be disappointed with me that I haven't been able to, to, to get more wins in the win column and, um, or that, that we are not like a top 25 team right now. And, and I get that's disappointing, but there's no like true inner disappointment for me with the group. And again, I, because I'm here every day and, and I've seen the obstacles and what these guys have had to go through and, uh, you know, and, and the ups and the downs and, and some hard losses and, you know, just a lot of things that have happened to young kids. And, and the fact that we're still pushing and we're fighting, and we're battling. And, um, you know, I think it says a lot about the character of, of, uh, of the group. So I'm very, very proud of them. And I got, you know, a lot of respect for the way, you know, we're again continuing to navigate through, you know, a tough time. Doug Holler. I think he's on mute. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I'm sorry right. about that. Uh, can you just provide an, uh, an update on where you guys stand and going into um, Wednesday health wise? And then also in relation to a guy like John Homestead, who has given you some pretty decent minutes the last few games. Uh, how, how do you use him in practice? And, and how challenging is that for a guy who is not used to playing at this level to be kind of thrust into a situation and, uh, and get meaningful minutes? Yeah, so Doug, we're virtually in, in a very similar space as we were going into Oregon State. Um, things are, are very much up in the air, you know, for, for both Marcus and Josh for Wednesday. They, they didn't practice today, um, but they're going on a trip and they are making, a, making good progress. And you know, we're going to have an opportunity to shoot tonight at USC and you know, maybe those guys will do a little something there and then we'll go through shoot around and reevaluate, you know, both of those guys. Um, as far as, you know, Pablo is still out. Um, Tayshawn is still out, obviously. You know, Caleb will be, will be back um, for this game. So we'll have, you know, I think that'll get us to eight scholarship players um, 
again, depending on on what Josh and Marcus are uh, are going to do. But I mean, I, I have I anticipate one or both of those guys playing at some point this week. And I, you know, again, we have to just see how that shakes out. Um, as far as John, John is uh, again. I, I I said it in one of my uh, one of my press conferences. He's one of the first guys that I worked with. You know, uh, after COVID, we were finally able to start workouts in, in late July. And, uh, you know, he was in the gym working, was in really good shape. You know, he and Chris Austin were working together. And he's just been, you know, he's, he's really loyal, dependable guy, just always, you know, ready to practice and give you everything he has. Uh, really has a good understanding of multiple positions, our offense and our defensive concepts. So uh, just – and he wasn't – he wasn't afraid in a moment either game. You know, he really went in there, played with good confidence. He didn't try and do anything he wasn't capable of doing and just did a really solid job. Uh, Trevor Booth, go ahead. Hey, Bobby, you guys have forced uh, 15 or more turnovers in three of your last uh, four games. Where do you feel like you guys are just trending defensively with the pressure um, you're generating in the full and half court? Well, it's important to what we do because, uh, again, it'll be a contrast of two teams that, uh, you know, are, are pretty different, you know, with, with USC with their size and uh, one of the be best defensive teams in the conference. Uh, you know, they, they use it with their length and, uh, and their size, and we kind of got to rely on our speed and our quickness. And so if we're able to, to generate those turnovers, we – uh, get some relief and a little pressure off our offense. We, I think we had like four uncontested layups off steals versus uh, Oregon State. So that certainly helps uh, your offense when you could, you know, generate points like that off your defense. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to really, uh, you know, make some adjustments to the way we played USC the first time. I think it's, uh, I think we learned just maybe truly how tall they are um, and, you know, avoid going in there, uh, you know, without a plan because uh, those guys are challenging and contesting everything at the basket. And then also on the perimeter, man, we got to be able to move the ball and spray the ball and, uh, and get some more open shots because even their wings have really good length and they were able to get a, get a hand on a couple of our jump shots in, in our first meeting. So we uh, have to do a better job of, you know, not getting our shot blocked in this game if, if we can. Cam, did you have one? Nope. Hey, Coach. Um, just, I mean, as you're getting towards the end of the season, what's your message to your guys? I mean, is it's, you know, there's only a few weeks left in all of this, and who knows what's going to happen. What are you telling your guys? Well, I mean, we, we talked about after uh, the Oregon game, you know, continuing the battle, continue to, to get yourself in close games, figure out how to win close games. Uh, you know, making sure we're competing, you know, every time we step on the court because, uh, you know, it's getting closer to the point that your season, you know, could end uh, here when, when you get to the postseason and it's single elimination time and we have to, we have to be ready to play with that desperation. We have to, you know, be ready to continue to build on the way we've been able to win close games uh, three of the last four and, and just hope that we could get healthy and, and add some guys to what we're doing. Awesome. Does anybody, if anybody else has anything, just speak up. Going once, twice. Have a good Tuesday. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Scott.